CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Floorshine Comfort Tech Shoes. Try a pair and get comfortable. And by Edge Shaving Gel. Ultimate closeness, ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. 13 to nothing Chicago. The touchdown. A pass to Tom Waddle. Let's get the report from the locker rooms from Leslie Visser. Leslie? Jim, offensive coordinator for the Vikings, Jack Burns, said they're pleased that they've been able to move the ball, but obviously they have to take care of it. The key to the second half will be to push the tempo, make the Bears chase them. Now, how critical is this game? Jack Burns said, if we're going to be something this year, this is the game to raise our hand. Jim? This would be a game you could really build on if you were the Vikings and able to come back in the second half. But they have not really, in the last two years, been a real good come-from-behind team. Well, not, not really, Jim. But if, if you look at this game, if you're Denny Green, you don't change anything. You don't do anything different. There's no panic button here. You get your team just to concentrate. Think ball when you're hit. Simple things. Rich Gannon, take the high percentages. And if you're Chicago and Mike Ditka, you've got a real problem. You've had a hard time in the second half really maintaining leadings, leads and maintaining intensity and maintaining really your concentration. Some of the numbers at the half, Randy, and you pointed out that until that last Bears drive, they really didn't have a whole lot of yardage. Chicago, in fact, not as many yards in that first half as Minnesota, but the three turnovers make quite a difference. Well, the one stat I want to concentrate on that can come back to roost besides the turnovers is yards on first down. Minnesota very successful that opens their playbook that makes like our second and five every time Chicago if Minnesota can keep them in second and seven second and eight which produces third and five third and six then they've got a chance if Chicago can run the ball effectively Minnesota's in trouble this half there's squad Reves. he really didn't even need to arrive today until the third quarter no action to this point. How bad have the Bears been in the second half? Well, the numbers 79 to 27. In the two losses, Chicago's 2 and 2 coming into this game. In the two losses, the Bears were outscored 41 to nothing total in the second half. And yeah, Atlanta came back. You know, the Chicago Bears were up 31 to 7, and it's a big blowout and whatnot. But that is not something you expect from the Bears. If you think of killer instinct, this is the team that comes to mind, but not so far in the first month of the season. Minnesota coming here three and one today, tied with Tampa atop the Central Division, a game ahead of the Bears. Gentry bobbles it for a moment, then retrieves it. The flag is thrown into a pile, which will bring back the return. Gentry did a pretty good job motoring out to the 32. You see those flags going in the middle of the piles and the blocking. That's a block in the back. The old illegal block in the back. Here we go. Special teams again. Kickoff is fumbled. Drops off the timing of the coverage team, and the coverage team takes the nap. Holding number 59 on the return team during the return. Half the distance. First down. Okay, here's the crowd's chance. Your team's down 13 nothing. The defense has got to come through as does the crowd. From under center with split backs. Running left and running nowhere. Neil Anderson. Doubled up by Dolman and Jenkins. And this crowd in the Metrodome's taking that kind of a show me attitude. You got to give me a good reason to scream. And that was the start of a good reason with Dolman and the entire right side of that defense playing that counter tray, counter gap, whatever you want to call it. That's what Chicago ran to perfection last week against Atlanta, and that's what Minnesota just stuck. They lost the yard on that play, so it's second and 11. Anderson out of bounds after the catch. At the 13. Mike Merriweather on the tackle. It'll be third and about six. 
and that sets Minnesota up right where they want to be and Chicago doesn't want to be at third and six because right now they're coming after the quarterback. It's go after the quarterback with the linemen and let your nickelbacks and linebackers worry about the running backs. They've brought in Eric Everett. You see him number 31 along with Anthony Parker as they bone up now in the secondary with six DBs on third and six. Keep an eye on that right side of Randall and Dolman coming after Harbaugh. Waddle makes the catch near the first. They give him forward progress just past the 19. And that'll be a first down. So yeah, this is not the Metrodome crowd I remember. I remember coming into this place and having it be completely hostile. I mean, the only time these people are getting up right now is to let somebody else that's been either in the restroom or getting a, a Coke and a dog yeah. early. <laughs> that's a big first down for Chicago. Would have set up Minnesota in good field position. Now the right side with Anderson. Thomas and Merriweather make the play for Minnesota. That's that counter play. They ran it to the left, and the right side stuffed it last time. Now they're going to try it over to the right. Watch the linemen. Here they come. They're sitting back in their stance. Wojciechowski and Ozin, you know it's a trap. One, two. Now watch the fill. That's the key to that play. Thomas winding around from the nose guard, and the backside linebacker, Del Rio, coming in there off the bubble. That's the key to stopping the gap. Not the first guys, but the second, third, and fourth. Anderson split it as a receiver to the right on second and seven. Muster. Jenkins ran right down the line with him. No gain. Well, the Chicago team came into this game averaging five and a half yards a crack. Spent the better part of the first half, at least seen, running the ball very effectively. Right now, the Minnesota defense has put the attack back into attack defense. As you can see, I mean, that might surprise a lot of people that San Francisco's in second, but with Ricky Waters leading that 49er crowd, they're up there in the realistic territory. Chicago is having an unreal start of their season running the ball. Third and seven. Goldman appeared to jump early. Or was he drawn off by Ozine? He started, then Azim started. Azim can point at Dolan, but Azim's not supposed to move. Ball start. Left tackle number 75 yards. Third down. Now Dolman can move. Dolman can go across and come back. Look at the youngster lean. You see that little that little fidget? Just a little quiver there in his stance. And that's what pulled Dolman off. Look at this. Minnesota establishing that running game. They have 88 yards rushing already. They didn't have that many in either games against the Chicago Bears last year. But the Bears lead at 13-0, third and 12. Giving chase to Harbaugh. Gets away from him. Now throwing on the run for the first down at the 38 to Wendell Davis. Harbaugh had heat coming from Thomas, Randall, and Dolman. And he got away from him. If you'd have taken a poll a couple of years ago, people tell you that a guy like Jim Everett's invaluable, big, strong arm thrower. I think people now are starting to appreciate that a young guy or a guy that can move and run, the Harbaugh's, the Gannon's, the Cunningham's, the Young's, those are the quarterbacks you need. Defensive linemen are so quick, your quarterback's got to be able to run. What an asset. Well, Ditka said there are a lot of fancier quarterbacks, but ours is awfully tough. He's picked up another first down at the 37. Slow developing play. It's a screen on the right side to muster, and that picks up 10. Looks like another first down. And looks like another update coming out of Atlanta in the Georgia Dome. Greg Gumbel. 
Right you are, Jim Nance. Brett Favre to Sterling Sharp. A quick pass in the flat, and then Sharp evades the tackler, completes the 16-yard play. Packers are on the board. They trail the Falcons 17-7 in the third, Jim. What was that Sterling Sharp before the game was doing? Getting autographs. You got Deion Sanders' Deion autograph. Sanders. I cannot. That is a first. I have never seen What that. would you do if one of your old teammates, if you ever saw him do that during during the warm-ups? I believe they refer to it as going off. <laughs> I'd have gone off. I'd have gone nuts. It was a first down for the Bears. The pass play to Muster. Going across his body. Good job by Harbaugh to net nine to Jennings. Chicago coming out here in the in the second half saying you're not going to be in this thing for the crowd. The crowd seems disinterested. They're all sitting here kind of subtly with their hands sitting on their hands watching. But the Chicago offense has put their hands underneath their seats right now. This offense is really methodical right now. Very very patient. And Jim Harbaugh look at this. Watch him throw this ball. Not what you would refer to as classic quarterback throwing form, but he knows where everybody is on this offense. It's hard to look classical, though, when you're going across the body. Second down and one. And that's Muster for the first down inside of the 40. How about this drive, Randy, for the Bears? This takes a lot of steam out of a defense that's been popping you pretty good in the face. And they're just right now being very patient, very methodical very businesslike and just moving the ball watch mustard nothing real fancy here he gets his shoulders turned towards the goalpost and really doesn't vary too much what minnesota needs right now is for chicago to make one of those mistakes like they made offensively either an interception or a fumble to get some of the momentum back into the game a rookie on the defensive line for minnesota brad culpepper number 77 goldman is out first and ten play Harbaugh. Back to Waddle. Stepped out of bounds. A toe out of bounds at the 26. Right now, Chicago's in that territory. They've got themselves a field goal with Butler, as strong as his leg is right now. But let's watch Waddle, the inside receiver, working in the slot right here. Going against Lee. Just gets the ball. Now he does a little right, two, three, out. There you go. The Bears say they wear black shoes, but I don't think they wear black shoes. I think they spat up and they paint them. That's kind of like false advertising, isn't it? I have to ask him about that this week. 11th play of the drive, first and 10. And Muster for about three. Chopped up by George Hinkle. And this is just what Mike Ditka wanted to do coming into this ball game. He said, you've got this defense. They're very confident. They think they're quick. They think they've got an edge. What you do is you just take the ball and you stick it in their face and you keep pounding it. And that's just what the Bears are doing on this drive. A couple improvs out of Harbaugh, but otherwise, it's been just brutal. Says we have to stunt their confidence. We can't let them take off. They are the biggest front runners in the league. He said with some venom. Well, he doesn't have a whole lot of love for this Minnesota Viking organization. Second down, seven. To the 20 with Anderson. It'll be third and four. Felix Wright came up to make the play. And we talked earlier how third and four, third and five, third and six was a was possibly kind of a throwing down. What Chicago's done so far in this game is they put they planted a few seeds of doubt in the Minnesota defense right now. The Minnesota defense going into this play has got to be thinking about their screen they ran. They've got to be thinking about the draw. They've got to be thinking if they come out with a bunch of wide receivers, they're going to gash us up the middle. Defenders don't like to think. Defenders like to go and react. We're approaching the six-minute mark to go in the third quarter. Minnesota has not even had the football in this half. Third will call it five. Harbaugh back to Waddle for the first down. Eight straight completions by Harbaugh. And here's, here's Waddle, the outside receiver at the top of the screen. They clear out Davis in front of him. He just comes underneath. And Lee doesn't really have a chance because he's screened off by McMillan and, and Davis going up the field. Waddle's not a spectacular guy. He's a guy that really 
Jacob Gifty used to describe last year as a guy you don't really know why why you keep him on the team or why he makes the play. And it just happens. First and ten from the 13. Look out! Oh, what a dangerous toss that was. Carl Lee tried to run it down. And that's the kind of play that we were talking about, the kind of play, the turnaround thing that this defense would have used, because Harbaugh should not have thrown that ball. I know he was off balance. I know he was rushed. But if you're going to throw that, throw it over the cheerleader's head, not your guy. So that stops his completion string at eight in a row. Second and ten as we now see the drive has almost endured ten minutes of the third quarter. Timeout called by Harbaugh. With 5.17 on the clock, Chicago 13 and Minnesota nothing. Mitsubishi believes that a luxury car should offer something beyond the usual luxuries. It may be extraordinary power and control, a consummate blend of comfort and performance, or a state-of-the-art four-wheel drive system. The 3000 GT, the Diamante, the Montero. Lease the luxury car of your choice. Only $3.99 a month for 36 months. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. A jillion tiny air bubbles make Comfort Tech lightweight and super flexible. The comfort's made for you. With Floor Shine Comfort Tech shoes, you can go anywhere in comfort. Floor Shine Comfort Tech for America. Casual looks. <laughs> the looks is dressy. Hey. For America. Get comfortable. Floor Shine Comfort Tech. Bill Clinton says he'll only tax the rich to pay for his campaign promises. But here's what Clinton economics could mean to you. $1,088 more in taxes. $2,072 more in taxes. 100 leading economists say his plan means higher taxes and bigger deficits. $1,191 more in taxes. $2,072 more in taxes. You can't trust Clinton economics. It's wrong for you. It's wrong for America. It's almost as though the Bears have reduced this to a three-quarter football game as Minnesota has not even touched it in the second half and the Bears are still driving. This offense so far in this drive has got all the all the finesse of George Foreman in a tutu. I mean they are just coming <laughs> out and just smashing Minnesota. They're making Minnesota look undersized on this drive and this is a great play. This is a you hear about wasting a pitch. This is wasting a play. They can afford to dump something out wide. A little slant to receivers. If you don't break a tackle, it's five yards. If you do, it's six. Second and ten. The 15th play of the drive is play action to Muster. Barreling near the first down. About two yards shy at the six. Del Rio and Merriweather combined on the collision. Well, now on third down, you have the luxury of going into the end zone if you choose. But remember... A field goal here puts you up by 16 points, which necessitates three scores. And I know it's awful early to talk about this, but this is a 10-minute-plus drive. We're going to be in the fourth quarter here shortly. There's still some people in lines for hot dogs and cokes going to come back and find themselves in the fourth quarter for the second time they're in line. Harbaugh, quarterback sneak. Quarterback draw. And Harbaugh... Almost untouched. Well, at least for today, I think we just laid to rest. Can the Bears come out with a lead and can they play in the second half? Because nothing is more definitive and settles that issue more than a long, brutal drive by your offense. That is a tired and right now beaten defense coming off the field. 20 to nothing. Harbaugh's first rushing touchdown of the season, a six-yard quarterback draw. Great time to call it. Work to perfection. Why get an inferior shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest? 
Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have the most advanced, giving you the closest shave with less irritation? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. There is a sound that you can expect to hear on a new Riviera. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who now converge on Miami's legendary beach. Beck, the number one imported German beer on Ocean Drive in America and the world. The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. Eclipse. Noun. The motion of one heavenly body passing in front of another. An eclipse occurs only with the perfect alignment of arcs and curves and angles. Eclipse. Verb. To surpass. To cast in shadow. To leave others behind. The stunning eclipse from Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Tuesday night, the Pirates face the Braves. Wednesday night, the A's take on the Blue Jays. The battles of October begin with the League Championship Series on CBS. Save this clip and put it in your playbook. You want to see a perfect quarterback draw? Watch Fontenot. Whack! Right on Felix Wright. Felix, if you can't make a 280-pound center miss you and get in on a tackle, you must be real tired. They were out there for over 10 minutes and a touchback. I'm sure the defense was quite fatigued as Harbaugh connected on eight of nine passes on that drive. So behind a timeout, an official timeout in the third quarter. My last business trip was the, of nowhere. the most unusual the middle of place. nowhere. Every day. Two million travelers set out to do business. Last year I traveled 65 days. days. Who would know better what they need than Holiday Inn? I always rehearse my presentation. I always rehearse my presentation in front of the bedroom the bathroom mirror. We make them feel welcome in so many ways. Maybe that's why more business travelers stay with us than anyone else. What I miss, what most, I miss most is my, my children. children. Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know who really knows you. Mitsubishi believes that a luxury car should offer something beyond the usual luxuries. It may be extraordinary power and control, a consummate blend of comfort and performance, or a state-of-the-art four-wheel drive system. The 3000 GT, the Diamante, the Montero. Lease the luxury car of your choice. Only $3.99 a month for 36 months. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. If you want to move ahead in any career, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to work with a team, how to handle responsibility, how to take on a tough job and see it through. You can learn all these things in the Army. So when you do set off on the road to success, you'll already be in the driver's seat. This is your cost of health care wake-up call. Can you afford to get sick? Real answers to save you real dollars in a special Money Crunch series. Tomorrow on the CBS Evening News. Doubleheader day, game two. The Rams at the Niners. Most will see that. You folks in New York will get, of course, the Giants and the Raiders. Some will watch Washington at Phoenix. The road team in that Rams-Niners series has won seven of the last nine. Today they come from the stick. First and ten. First play of the second half for the Viking offense. And a pass play of four to Chris Carter. Singletary on the coverage. And the Viking offense is out of the territory now of staying extremely patient. They're now into the land of we got to make something happen and we got to make something happen now. Down 20 to nothing. Saints have come back to take the lead over the Lions. In the third, here's an end around with Anthony Carter. Nice maneuvering by Carter to pick up the Vikings first at the 33-yard line. Let's go to New York and get the update on the Saints and the Lions. Greg Gumbel.
All right, Jim, at the Silver Dome, the Saints have taken the lead. Rookie Vaughn Dunbar, his first NFL touchdown from a yard out. That's the first rushing TD for New Orleans this year, and it gives them a three-point lead over Detroit, 10-7 in the third, Jim. That was a game that was destined for a last two-minute finish. The Saints and the Lions pounding it out. First and ten, Vikings. Hassan Jones upended by Wolford. Oh. Well, they went back to that one. Hassan Jones, Gannon missed him last time. What do you get when you get it this time? Remember all the room that Hassan had around him last time? Listen to the result of this one. Merry Christmas, Mr. Jones. About a yard short of the first. By the way, Trace Armstrong with a respiratory infection is out for the game. That's the word from the Chicago bench. So Spellman is in for him. And this is this will be Spellman's first extended action. You're Minnesota. You got to think the young guy might be getting a little tired playing this much. I'd go at him. Third and one. Spellman on the right side of your screen. Roper. And this is going to be close. Roper with quite a tackle. He felt pretty confident going into this game, didn't he? Well, he's a very extremely confident. And he's also not intimidated but he, he's he's a little bit concerned they've taken him out in the nickel situations he had eight sacks last year and Ditka's looking for this guy to give him results he says you know I've got nothing I've got no problem with John Roper at this time this guy is not making the plays if Roper starts making the plays he'll see more playing time Roper stops him short he told us they can't run on us we're not worried about them running I think Minnesota's got to go for it here looks like they're gonna with 142 to go in the third and the ball on the Viking side of the field. Green is going for it. He's brought in Derek Tunnell, a tight end just signed this week. From a mental standpoint, Jim, he's got to do this. Denny Green's got to do this for his team. His guys need a boost of confidence. And McDaniel drops back as a blocking back for Terry Allen on fourth and inches. Quarterback sneak and Gannon with the second effort may have gotten it. And he's going to be close. He rolled right off the pile. The spot on this side of the field, Jim, would appear that they got that. You've got a 285-pound fullback. i got to ask, why don't you lead up there and soften things up? Why you run a quarterback sneak? Gannon does a nice job with his second effort. He stopped. Completely repulsed at first. Now Roper gets in. Singletary comes over the top. He keeps struggling. Now it's a matter of where they spot it. I think he is just going to be a hair short. Just about the length of a football. The Bears will let us know. The crowd does as well. First down, Minnesota. That was a good spot for the Vikings. Sure didn't look like he got it. So Green gambles, and the Vikings get that boost as we near the end of the third quarter. Three receivers to the right. Four in all for Minnesota on first and ten. Carter for only a yard. Jim Morrissey put a monster hit on him. This offense for Minnesota right now is just a little bit off. Gannon would have wanted to get that ball to Chris Carter about a second before he actually threw to him. They had the three man, three receiver formation. The other two guys cleared out. Carter came underneath. He was open a lot sooner than Gannon got on the ball. Carter, five catches for only 21 yards, all in the short variety. Second and nine, here's the long one to AC and intercepted. 
Lemuel Stinson with the interception. That's an underthrown ball by Gannon. And Lemuel Stinson said, hey, we're going to get five turnovers tomorrow. Well, they've got four. Stinson said he's going to get two interceptions. There's his first one. Top of the screen. There goes Carter. Stinson looks back. Look at that head whip back. He picks the ball up. Would have been a perfect pass if he was the receiver. It wasn't. First down, Chicago. The award-winning Mitsubishi 3000 GT. The stunning Mitsubishi Eclipse for 1993. In the third quarter, from its own 12. Anderson. Sticks his helmet in the, to a couple of defenders out at the 18. Darren Lewis was in the backfield and threw a block for him. That is likely the last play of the quarter. Stinson did indeed tell us we'll force five turnovers tomorrow. Three interceptions and two fumbles. So far it's two and two. So quite clairvoyant Mr. Stinson's part. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Chicago 20, Minnesota nothing. The years calling it the Roller Dome, the Tinker Dome. So it'll be more suitable for a livestock show than a football game. Well, Disc is not big on these oversized living rooms, but uh, <laughs> you know, this, this Chicago Bear football he's playing right now with this offense is taking all the air out of the Minnesota Vikings. All the puff, all the expanded chest, all the confidence is like a pin in the knee, pin in the balloon right now. They're just letting all their air out. Second down four to start the fourth quarter. Somersaults to the 18. Minnesota, I know they're an attacking defense, and they have been out there quite a while so far in this second half. But right now, Minnesota's got to come. Keep attacking. Keep going after people. If anybody's going to turn this around for the Minnesota Vikings, it's going to be this defensive unit. Al Noga. Anxious as the Bears are in no hurry. Two Butler field goals. A touchdown pass from Harbaugh to Waddle before the half of 28 yards. And a Harbaugh quarterback draw of six yards the scoring in this game. Harbaugh overthrows Anderson on third down, and a flag is dropped. Roughing the passer. Huh? Yep. On Chris Dolman. Not a smart play, Jim. That was that was. It was stupid. Yeah, really. I mean, you're going to get the football back now. You would have. But now they give him a first down with the personal foul against Dolman. We've got to get replugged in here, get that seat. But we wonder what happened when they ran out of beanbags and flags and hats. See, he threw his pet battery pack on that last <laughs> one. Personal foul, roughing the passer. And I got to tell you, I guarantee it was that guy right there, Chris Dolman. Because watch him coming around the top of the screen, working on Ozine. Gets that rip. Now watch the left arm. Right into the head. Oh, why, was, why do that? That was nasty. Why do that? Lewis and Anderson are the running backs as Muster gets a rest. Now Anderson chips to a receiver position at the top of the screen. getting all over Harbaugh. Todd Scott getting in the end zone. Look at, look at Ditka. I'll paraphrase there. I can't believe you threw that ball. I don't think he was open. What were you thinking? That, and that is really paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
the Minnesota defense. It was their game to get their team back into it. That was a big one. But you don't expect a gift like that, trailing 20 to nothing. 37-yard return by Todd Scott, and it's now 20 to 7, Chicago. We'll return to the Metrodome after this message from your local station. You're watching the National Football League on CBS. Todd Scott told us I'm a very emotional player. He has just scored his first NFL touchdown. He said, I want to get the crowd into the game tomorrow. So when we talked to him yesterday, he certainly has done that for the first time today. The Metrodome has come to life. Well, they're in the, they're, the crowd is into the game, but so is the Viking defense. They got a three and out the Bears here if they want to give their offense a chance. And Reves into it as a fumble by Gentry to get to the outside for the 15. Nice job by Minuski saving a big play. But just moments ago, Neil Anderson split out to the left. You knew it was going there. Todd Scott wasn't guessing. That was a slam dunk they were going to Neil Anderson. Harbaugh making at least, well, I can't call that an attempt to make a tackle. But here we go. We're going to see a little of the action from Todd Scott. He's got no name for this. He just does it. I like to call us an offensive defense, he said. And they've scored the Vikings' only points off the interception return. Harbaugh comes back throwing. Hits his tight end, Blackwell, across the middle. Barry and Del Rio on the coverage. Blackwell's second NFL catch. And no I'm sorry, Jim, and nothing will get this crowd out of the game again any faster than another methodical type of a drive out of the Chicago Bears. If you're Minnesota, that was a gift. You mentioned during the break, that was a gift. Well, that was a gift, Jim. What the Vikings have to do, they have to strip the ball. They get a guy with the ball, grab those arms, try to pull that, get that ball out of there and take some chances. Second down and two. Muster is back in the lineup. The crowd is back into the game. Muster for no game. Chris Dolman. Maybe even a loss. Chris Dolan was a nice play coming all the way from the outside around Troy Azeen to make this play. Watch this, top of the screen, 56. Azeen almost does a Nolan Ryan, nearly throws a no-hitter at him, and Dolman comes around to make that play. Muster, the last three games, averaging over five yards a carry. Today, only seven attempts for 13 yards. Third and two. Ball is batted in the air and intercepted. No, it couldn't hold on. It was Vincy Glenn diving for it after the deflection by Scott. That would have been a tough play. That is the kind of play a team makes when they really get on a roll. This is kind of a mini roll by the Vikings, but watch Todd Scott. He reads Harbaugh, sees Ooh. it all the way. The heck with Vincey Glenn's catch. That one wasn't deflected by Todd Scott. It looks like it went off his face. You know, that ball had so much velocity when it hit Scott, he had no one in front of him. Oh, he, he, he had open space for another touchdown. Oh, there, was no, there was no reaction time, though. From the time Harbaugh let that ball go, he had no time to get his hands up. Gardaki to punt with 12-20 remaining in the game. Good boot, real good hang time, and Parker with the fair catch. So the Vikings will take over, trailing 20 to 7. Touchdowns, but plenty of time, 12-13 on the clock. Not a time for Gannon to try to reach and try to take a chance. About nine yards. It'll be second down and one. And we're going to be leaving momentarily for a special report. Now we go to New York for a special report from CBS News. 
Dome. The Vikings have completed two straight passes. The last one coming from Hassan Jones. We said watch out for the reverse and then maybe a pass. There it is. And the Vikings are moving. First down, down by 13. First down at the 26 of Chicago. Pump fake. Gannon to Allen at the 20. Another first down at the 16. Ten minutes to go in the game. Chicago entered this final quarter with a 20 to nothing lead with possession of the football when Jim Harbaugh threw an ill-advised pass that was picked off by Todd Scott on the sideline, run back for a touchdown, brought this crowd to life, and now the Vikings on offense driving, driving in a hurry, I might add. Nice job by Gannon, pump fake, wanted to go deep into the end zone, it wasn't there, and he dumped it down. his body open is Carter Chris Carter for the touchdown Minnesota suddenly within a touchdown. Chris Carter with his fifth touchdown reception of the season. 16 yards from Gannon. The Bays cuts it to six. Still 9.37 left in the game. 20 to 14. How much insulation do you have in your attic? Three inches? Six inches? Well, the Department of Energy recommends R38 for most American homes, which is equivalent to a foot of Owens Corning pink fiberglass. So grab a ruler and measure your attic insulation. Then get rolling. And get a foothold on your energy bills. For more information, call 1-800-GET-PINK. Yo, guys, this is Yogi. You can't top no. the Pringles pop. The James Beard top. Pringles? I haven't tried them in years. Pringles taste better than these bag chips. Check it out, yo. I'll believe it when I believe it. So? I believe it. They taste better. Yeah. Observe. Bag chips feel greasy. Grease don't taste good. Taste tastes good. The Yeah! Won't you pop? That's right. Only Ford Truck offers driver airbags in both mini and full-size vans. But there's a lot more to safety than that. That's why Ford not only designs and builds trucks to meet or exceed federal crash test requirements, we also do special safety testing of our own. We do what the government says and a lot more. The best-built, best-selling American trucks are built Ford Tough. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Pringles. So fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? And by Castrol Syntec, the new synthetic oil that protects and weighs other oil. Quad Reveas is ready. It's 20 to 14 Chicago. Minnesota has not won a game when it trailed going into the fourth quarter. Since 1990, they've lost 10 in a row when they entered the fourth quarter behind. But what a rally they've mounted so far. Gentry, touch back, out to the 20. That was a beautiful effort by Gannon on that touchdown pass, Randy. And a good call by Jack Burns, the offensive coordinator, rolling right into Richard Dent. Watch Dent. See him bite there, 95. Watch out, cross the body. What a throw. Perfect timing to Chris Carter. You think this guy likes it? You think this offense is getting fired up? You be the judge.
Anderson trying to get outside on Scott. Doubled up by Scott and Audrey McMillan. Looks and like a flag down for a face mask. Yep, looks like the right at the end of that right end of that play, we got a face mask there. There's defensive coordinator Tobin, Vince Tobin, talking to his guys in no uncertain terms about that last drive. These guys know it. It's up to them right now. Face mask, number 38 on the tackle, five yards. Still first down. Watch at the very end, right there. Ooh, that was a good one, too. That wasn't even a half a face mask. That was uh, five fingers through the metal and into the nose and over the eyebrows. <laughs> Miami with a 103-yard interception return for a touchdown by Lewis Oliver. And they're going to do something they rarely do, win up at Buffalo. Next week, the Dolphins will host Atlanta. Nine minutes remaining. First and three. And that'll give him another set of downs across the 30. Neil Anderson. 14 carries, 43 yards today. The Vikings have not really allowed anyone to post impressive numbers rushing this year, including the way they shut down Barry Sanders. They really have. I mean, as a defense, people want to talk about, hey, they're undersized, and, and we can just slap that ball into them and run over them because they're not a physical defense. But this is a defense that takes a lot of pride in what they do against the run because they know that sets up their game to rush the passer. Sanders only had 26 yards, or 26 carries for 66 yards, way below his average against Minnesota. First and 10, and Harbaugh with a flag down. Flag at the line of scrimmage. I think he got a holding on Troy Azine working against Dolman. He was mauling him. He brought in Stan Thomas on the offensive line for the Bears. He has not really seen much action at all this season. Well, that's last year's rookie with all the pressure on him. He didn't handle it well, and there he held. Illegal formation. Number 60 on the offense is not on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined, second down. Well, watch the top of the screen here. I guess he moved, but I know he mauled him. Watch top of the screen. See if he moves. Number 60, a left tackle. It's the four motion, formation. He's in the backfield, and he's holding the double out of Dome. Too far off the line of scrimmage. Is that what it was? That old flying wedge idea they don't go for anymore. <laughs> Second down, 10, 8, 11 remaining. Blackwell wrapped up in a hurry at the 35 by Del Rio. It'll be third in the bounce, six. You know, last week, the Chicago Bears were one of five on third down conversions. Right now, they are seven of 12. And they used third down to perfection that last drive. Third and five. Movement on the left side. This play will come back if it's complete. Broken up by Parker. It was Thomas moving again on the left side of that Bears line. Ozine is out with a bruised left shoulder, and we're not sure if he'll return or not today. That's why Thomas is seeing action on this series. That really hurts the Bears. He's been very consistent. Thomas has proved he isn't. That's against Thomas, and... Well, they take why, the five yards. Why do you take that penalty and not make him kick it and get the ball? I don't understand that. I mean, this is looking for an opportunity for something bad to happen. I do not understand why you take that penalty. Unless they ruled the play was over as soon as Thomas moved. Didn't hear, didn't hear a whistle. No, Chicago, they, 
That's their first they charge certainly timeout. played it out like it was a live ball. So it was, in fact, we're receiving word now. Ball snap before the false start before the snap. It's a dead ball situation. So they have to take the penalty. And a timeout by the Bears with half the quarter remaining. Boy, I tell you, that was some tongue lashing that Harbaugh had to take from Ditka. Oh, yeah. You know, Mike, Mike Ditka does not hold things back. You might see him in the public and see him in the press talking about how the new mellow and the new uh, low-key Mike Ditka, that is not the case when it comes to dealing with these situations on the field. He can do whatever he wants down there. And right now, he's working that tobacco pretty hard. He's not a happy <laughs> camper. He said this week, I'm a realist, not a phony, and I know where the problems are, we're trying to solve them, trying to find some solutions. They had for the better part of three quarters. Now his team will face a serious challenge at third and 11 from its own 30. And it hasn't been a case of a letdown by the Chicago Bears as much as it was one mistake by Jim Harbaugh throwing a ball he shouldn't have thrown giving a team enthusiasm that enthusiasm carried over into the offense for the next score. Ditka makes one decision here. He takes Thomas out and brings in the rookie Lewis Age. Lewis Age the 6'7 352 pound giant who grew up with a poster of William Perry in his bedroom as he well, as he, a kid. He modeled the body type pretty well except he grew a little bit taller than the fridge. This guy is gigantic. He's not a regular starter at college at southwestern Louisiana until his senior year. They think that he's quite a prospect down the line. Got him out of the 11th round. And this is a, the toughest situation you can put any lineman in. A loud stadium. You're going against the NFL's best rusher. He is going to be coming after age. Dolman. They fake the handoff, and Harbaugh wants to run for it. Not even close. Scott helps out on Randall. The two of them make the hit at the 34. Minnesota will get the football back. They tried a little razzle-dazzle play action, bringing Wojciechowski from the backside to help out on to help out on Dolman. They needed it, and Harbaugh had to scramble. Block running with 6.50 to go. by Parker at the 22. 43 yards on the punt, no return. And the Vikings and Minnesota down six with 640 remaining. But Michael comes in on Gannon. Allen has it. Gets away from the tackle. And across the 40, chased out by Dent. Broke away from Wolford. The key for Minnesota on that last drive were plays of 10 yards or more. Going into the last drive, they had four. That last drive, they had five plays of 10 yards or more. And now they start another one off. You get it in big chunks. That builds the excitement. That builds enthusiasm. And not only was it 10 yards or more, it matched Terry Allen's number. That was a 21-yard game. Roger Craig is in, along with two tight ends. Fake the end around to Carter. They come back to the other side with Roger Craig. Chris Carter trying to throw a block for him. Roger Craig into Chicago territory at the 35. Minnesota's giving Chicago a taste of their own medicine. You want to get your big guys humping after the pass? Okay, no problem. Watch Randall McDaniel in front of Roger Craig. Comes back for Richard Dent. Now it's clear sailing. The offensive line is going to catch Roger here. Chris Carter's trying to do his best. Getting a little block. 22 yards. Craig's longest play as a Viking. 5.45 to go in the game. Inside the goal with Craig. Jumping off two tackles and gaining five to the 30. Good hard run by the 10-year veteran. 
Well, Chicago's got... lucky there. They did not have a face mask on William Perry because Roger Craig pulls right away from him. Watch this. Watch Perry go for this tackle. Whoa, right up there around the face mask. That's a, I, that is a, a good example of the strength of Roger Craig. It's deceiving. It's a 215, 220-pound running back. He's got the strength physically of an offensive lineman. Second and five, and on the rollout, Gannon on the sidelines has the first down with AC. Anthony Carter. Carter, earlier in this game, extended his Viking streak to 100 straight games with a reception. The outside receiver just running Wolford off here, comes back to the ball. Minnesota right now has taken a lot of the attack out of the Chicago defense with those two quick screen passes. Chicago right now seems a little disoriented. Just like a couple of quick hard jabs in the face that is trying to get their bearings. Under five minutes to go. 4.58. Terry Allen. There's an impressive defensive play. John Roper. The birthday man at age 27 today. Wanted to celebrate with a couple of sacks and make no mental errors. That's almost as good as a sack, that tackle for a loss. That puts you at second and ten, and that puts the puts the advantage back over to the defense. Now the defense can attack and dictate a little bit more because the offense is in a passing situation. I thought he'd lost a yard, but no, indeed. It was uh, back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Gannon in trouble. Make something out of it. Look at him go. What a great job. You can count on one hand the quarterbacks in the NFL that can make that kind of a play. And what starts to make a young quarterback special is when he can do these things in the crunch time. Look at this change of direction. Most quarterbacks run out of fear. This is running with ability. Whoa, Spellman, Alonzo almost got himself ahead there for his trophy case. That looked like, that looked like a little deep thing. Denny thinks it's a face mask. How could you tell? Something about seeing the label of the helmet suddenly twist around. Third and four. Terry Allen, first down inside the 10. And stack him up at the eight. Jack Burns on third and four. Crossed him up with a running play. The passing play is going well. Things are working effectively. That's when the coordinators start earning their money. The defense says, I'm going to attack. He says, OK, fine. Great job. Good block by McDaniel. Good job by Zimmerman. Terry Allen just runs straight between point A and point B right up the middle. Nine-yard run. 2.40 to go. And the clock is running. First and goal for Minnesota. Touchdown and an extra point away from taking the lead. Dan looks a little confused. Yeah, Winning teams don't make mistakes in this kind of a situation. Timeout, Minnesota with 2.28 to go in the game. Good heads-up play by Gannon. He knew there was some confusion, if not on his part, on his offensive part, and that is the worst situation you want to be in. That is when something happens. That's when mistakes are made and assignments are missed. See, right now, if you're Chicago, Jim, I think you're a little bit confused. You're not quite sure what they're going to throw at you. The advantage is definitely in Jack Burns' hands up here in the booth as the offensive coordinator. they got to worry about Allen. they got to worry about the Carters. they got to worry about Hassan Jones, who we haven't heard much of at all. And Mike Dick has got to worry about his defense. Because for the second week in a row, though they looked good earlier, they're starting to give up some points and some yards to a very aggressive offense. This one would be one of the hardest losses to take, though. I mean, you have a 20 to nothing lead with 14 minutes remaining and possession. Well, wins and losses, that 55 yards in between stripes makes a huge difference on the sidelines. First and goal from the seventh. 
Craig in the backfield. High stepping it to the outside and down at the three. Snatched by Singletary at the three. And the clock will run down to the two minute warning. And that shows good patience on Minnesota's part because they're going after attacking the edge of the defense where Dent isn't. That's where the pressure's coming from. They're going against the softer side. Two minute warning. As times changed, so did the Ford full-size pickup. The Vikings are three yards from tying it and then taking the lead with an extra point. Second and goal. We'll come from the two, actually. Two minutes remaining. Roger Craig hurdling to the one. Matter of perspective here from the official standpoint, where they saw him get to. Got one guy on one side marking it about the half yard line, and the other guy on the other side with the, at the one yard line. Now watch him jump. He's got Noble Seski at fullback in front of him. Wow, he leaps from the four. You can't jump from the four. That is a 12 foot jump in the air, and that just isn't going to happen, not with all that gear on. I don't care what kind of a great athlete you are like Roger Gregg. Unless you got Carl Lewis in the backfield, or you got Randall McDaniel at fullback instead of a tight end in front of you. So third and goal from the one, and the Bears have called their last timeout. Bears have no timeouts remaining. Well, we mentioned earlier, just about the time the Vikings ran that touchdown that was called back by the hold on uh, Jordan by Roger Craig, that uh, the Bears have very small defensive backs, specifically corners, they're not real tall. This is the perfect situation if you're gonna throw the ball Put it up there for one of your receivers, a Carter, one of the Carters, Chris or Anthony, up in the air, let him go after it. 148 to go, third and goal from the one. McDaniel in the backfield, lead block for Craig, touchdown Minnesota! Jumbo package. Randall McDaniel at fullback. Makes the soft spot. Roger Craig takes it in. A game that was dominated by the Bears. A Central Division sleeper. Somebody kissed this frog and turned it into a prince. Extra point, and the Vikings take the lead. Why should that surprise you? This is a hometown that delivered a rockster named Prince. Look at Randall McDaniel. The next best thing to carrying the ball is to making the block that gets you ahead in the game you really were out of only 15 minutes ago. Now is the situation. Over there on the sidelines as Danny Abramowitz gets the kickoff team, kickoff return team ready. Now's the time the crowd comes into play. Roger Craig's first touchdown as a Viking with McDaniel in front. Watch it from the end zone. Good lead block by McDaniel, but just a soft spot. McDaniel did a good job, but you got to talk about Loudermilk at center, Habib at right guard, and Irwin at right tackle, softening up that side of the line for Roger Craig. timeouts for Chicago they do have a minute 46 to get in Kevin Butler range and for those of you that remember the opener this year Detroit at Chicago Chicago drove the length of the field at the end of the game and a quick little pass to Waddle decided that one and gave the Bears a one-point win they only need a field goal in this situation
21 points in 12 and a half minutes. Minnesota again has lost 10 straight when trailing after three quarters. That streak could end in the next 146. What a boot! Oh. Claude Reves. It's his wife in the front row standing up, and the blonde sitting down next to her is Kevin Butler's wife. The, the one not standing up and not clapping. Here comes the crowd. This is the time, if you're a defense, the great plays come from the great players. And look at that differential in the second half has been expanded. That includes today. Watch for Dolman here. Working on Lewis Age. And Harbaugh dumps it off. Good catch by Anderson. And he has the first down. That looked like a play that was never going to develop. Well, they double-teamed Dolman at the top of that play up there with Age and Wojciechowski, and Randall almost had him. Good job by Harbaugh. First down, Chicago. Sideline overthrow. 1.18 to go. And Henry Thomas broke free that time and put a smack on Harbaugh. talk about comebacks 20 points is the biggest one that's today their greatest comeback in franchise history from 20 down in the fourth second and 10 Anderson trying to get near that first but about two yards shy two timeouts for Minnesota but it's Chicago that may want to have the chance to stop the clock they don't have any timeouts they're playing Vincey Glenn 20 yards deep in a deep safety running it for the first and not getting it it'll be fourth and a yard and they must set quickly you're a team that's averaged five and a half yards a carry in the Bears Now's the time. Fourth down. This could do it. Intercepted. Intercepted by McMillan. Minnesota has pulled off the greatest comeback in franchise history. great players make great plays and you got to give a lot of the credit for that interception to Dolman and Thomas and Noga and Randall that entire defensive line was all over Harbaugh on that series and there were three of them in his face on that pass one snap to make it official Minnesota is 4-1 for the first time since 1977. And for the Bears, this has got to be a killer. This is a crushing defeat for the Chicago Bears. One particular pass play by the Bears that could be a season killer. Jim Harbaugh throws the ball out in the flat, intended for Anderson. And that made the difference. Let's go down to Leslie Visser. Go ahead, Leslie.
Riesenberg up front. The tight end is Howard Cross. And at the backfield, Rodney Hampton, Jared Bunch at fullback. The wideouts are Mark Ingram and Stephen Baker. Baker, who had a big game in that Monday night win at Chicago. From the 20, first and 10. Sims across the middle. Rodney Hampton has the catch at the 28-yard line. Winston Moss, number 99, with the defensive play. Ronnie Lott, destined for the Pro Bowl someday, is the leader of a defensive unit that up front features Howie Long and Golick, along with Greg Townsend and Andre Bruce. The linebackers are Aaron Wallace, Ricky Ellison, and Winston Moss, and in the secondary, it's McDaniel and Washington on the corners. Eddie Anderson and Ronnie Lott are the safety. Second down and two from the 28. They try to sweep to the left side. Rodney Hampton, the ball carrier. And Nolan Harris at number 74, who is in there defensively, makes the tackle. And in talking to the Giant coaches, obviously after watching what Kansas City did on the ground against the Raiders, they feel that uh, they want their big offensive line to control that line of scrimmage and run the ball right at the Raiders. That play was going to the outside, uh, something a bit of a changeup. Uh, they're going to have a lot more success running between the tackles against an undersized defensive line of Los Angeles. Third and two, Dave Meggett in as a third down specialist. Meggett gets the handoff, and he's not going to get the first down. Aaron Wallace, number 51, puts the plug in the effort. And the Raiders hold defensively. They'll get the ball back. The Giants go three and out. And the Raiders told us that if they're going to win the game, obviously they've got to stop the run. First two plays, uh, running plays for the Giants, gained about one yard. Sean Landetta, who's been mired in a bit of a slump, you can see that he's five yards below his average he's had one block this year that is an average punt for landetta tim brown at the 29 and he slips and falls and the raiders will take over at their own 34 yard line a 42 yard punt and five on the return todd marinovich who started 11 games at usc started four for the raiders he's lost all four and he'll open a quarterback now in his second year up front it's wilkerson and wisniewski mosbar pete mcelroy for steve wright and ethan horton who was a pro bowl tight end a year ago dickerson and steve smith are in the backfield and willie galt and tim brown are the whiteouts first and ten los angeles at their own 34 yard line Marinovich with a play fake, fires the ball, it's caught by the tight end, Horton. And he is cut down at the 41-yard line by Perry Williams, number 23. LT, the leader of this defensive unit that has uh, grown a little long in tooth. They got some years of experience. Dorsey, Howard, Leonard Marshall did not make the trip. Mike Fox gets the start at right end. Banks, Johnson, Diossi, and Taylor, the linebackers. And in the secondary, it's Collins and Williams on the corner, Greg Jackson and Lamar McGriggs. Second down and three. Steve Smith, first down, Los Angeles. And a flag comes flying to the ground after that gain of seven. Steve Smith, who has uh, only carried it 17 times for the year now. An indication that this will be against the Giants. So the Raiders will, on their first possession, move into Giant territory. Gary Lane, in his first year as an NFL referee, has been a longtime official in the league and promoted this year to the referee spot. Illegal use of the hands, number 99 on the defense, five yard penalty, tacked on, first down. Steve Diossi. Some of you saw that Minnesota come from behind over Chicago. They were down 20 to nothing. Atlanta defeats Green Bay, and New Orleans gives Detroit its fourth loss of the year. Double tight end set on first down. Eric Dickerson tests the middle, driven back. We talked earlier about how Tom Walsh, the new play caller for the Raiders, 
wants to uh, protect his passer. He says the first thing in their passing game is not so much uh, the deep routes as everybody talks about, but they want to give Marinovich solid protection against this pass rush. Very concerned with the outside linebackers. And we saw on the first pass play by Marinovich, they rolled him out of the pocket to try to get away from that pressure. Well, they've made any number of changes. Marinovich took over from Jay Schrader two weeks ago. Here's Marinovich back and looking to his left. Finds his tight end, Andrew Glover. That's only the third catch in four games. Four games plus a couple of minutes for Glover. And he gains 10 and a first down at the 34. But again, it was a uh, quick drop, about a five-step drop by Marinovich. Uh, set that back foot, something he didn't do very well last week against that pass rush of the Chiefs. And he got rid of that ball in, in good fashion. Big first down. Archell in his fourth year. First and 10, Los Angeles. They lost at Denver, lost in overtime at Cincinnati, lost at home to Cleveland. And then the Monday night loss in Kansas City. Here's Dickerson dancing to the outside, losing ground. Lamar McGriggs, who was reinserted in the lineup for Everson Walls because, Ray Hanley said, he's a better tackler. And we saw a pretty good example there. Uh, Dickerson, if he gets outside of McGriggs, he has a big gain down the sidelines, but at, uh, you know, 210 pounds, 6'3", that's a big, strong safety and a good tackler, Lamar McGregg. 